People's Dispatch. Right now, I'm here at the Freedom Plaza in Washington, D.C. with a crowd that is multi-generational and multinational, slowly swelling, that has come from across the country and outside of the country, right? I mean, we've spoken to people from Chicago and even from Canada, people from New York City, people from across the country that have come here for the March for Gaza to call for a permanent ceasefire in Israel's ongoing war on the Gaza Strip, an end to the occupation in the West Bank, an end to the siege on Gaza, freedom for all Palestinian political prisoners, and an end to U.S. aid to Israel. My name is Carol. I am from Queens, New York. Uh, we bust four and a half hours down from New York to come to D.C. to send a message to the White House to say that the people will no longer stand by while Biden funds the genocide of Palestinians and while he funds the bombing of Yemen. My name is Mohammed Sabri. I'm out here with my friend. We're from Chicago coming out here to support Palestine. And the reason why we're out here, number one, first and foremost, is because this is a crisis of humanity. And that we see that the people's freedom is ta being taken away. People are being killed just for trying to live. It's not just a you know, regional cr a crisis. It's not just a, a problem for the Arabs. It's not just a problem for the Muslims. But rather, this is a problem for all of humanity. And this is a test of humanity if they stand for justice or not. Every single day, the people of Gaza are being killed. The bombing in Yemen, the poorest nation, they've been going through different famines. They've been uh, having a humanitarian crisis. And even then, they're being attacked just because they want to protect you know, their brothers and sisters that are suffering. Earlier this week, the U.S. and the U.K. launched airstrikes against Yemen, a country who has been standing in solidarity with the people of Palestine. They've been blocking ships going through the Red Sea, uh, saying that we're not going to allow these shipments to fund a genocide. Um, it's the principled position that they've taken. They've, uh, they've stood on the right side of history, and as a result, the U.S. Has, has bombed them and actually brought violence against the people of Yemen again. And we're also in an election year where the incumbent President Joe Biden is looking to be reelected but has lost key support among um, key voter demographics in this country, including Arab Americans and young people, um, because of his unwavering support for the genocidal policies of Israel. I will not be voting for Joe Biden. He is the fourth U.S. president to bomb Yemen, which is one of the poorest countries in the world. He is bombing Yemen to punish Yemen for their solidarity work. Uh, of trying to stop the war supplies that are being used on Palestinians. It's been a hundred days of non-stop bombing and a starvation campaign uh, by, the, by the Israeli government, which is fully, fully backed by the U.S. military, by the U.S. White House. So no, Biden has blood on his hands. Today, we're, we're here to show him that he cannot hide as the genocide goes by. I will not be voting for him. My peers will not be voting for him. Hell no, I will not be voting for Joe Biden uh, in the 2024 election. He's a war criminal. He should be charged at the Hague for genocide. I think uh, most of us will not be voting for him. Uh, we will not be um, supporting him as we can see that his policies do not really line up with our interests. Instead of uh, focusing on the American people, our tax money are being used to spread hatred, to spread warfare, to support criminal activity, to sp uh, frankly speaking, to sp support a genocide. We know it's significantly important for any presidential candidate running for the 2024 election to prioritize the freedom, liberation of Palestine. Anyone who does not do that is standing in support of genocide. Anyone who does not do that is standing in support of colonization. Anyone who does not do that is for the oppression of entire nations. And we're saying that not to mention and not to fight for the freedom of Palestine in a crucial moment where you have thousands, over 20,000 people who have been murdered by a colonial state, a state that has not, not regarded the lives of children, of mothers, of entire families who has destroyed infrastructure that is infrastructure that supports life. Anyone that stands behind that does not have the right to lead. Anyone who stands behind that does not have the right to 
express themselves in representation of the majority of people in this country because the majority of people in this country want the liberation of Palestine, want an end to genocide, want an end to the blockade on Gaza. And we know that a lot of politicians, especially Democratic politicians, they like to play a lot of lip service during, during the year, especially around domestic issues, and they never want to talk about imperialism, which as the center, it's the core of all the problems faced by the entire world. And so Claudia has said it before, we've said it before, like the struggle for the liberation of Palestine is a struggle for humanity. And it represents and it is emblematic of so many people's struggles around the world.